100 points each, who wins in a fight, souped up dwarf with mass hammer or one of the Emperor's finest bladesmen. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought we'd take a quick look at the Iron Hair Champion, one of the biggest, baddest and fightiest leagues of Votan HQ choices, and perhaps looks like the standout melee character in the book, particularly when buffed. On paper, this guy looks thoroughly terrifying, so I thought it might be interesting to take a look over his datasheet, any other ways that we could potentially soup him up and get more damage out of him, one scary build, and then do a quick mock battle versus the Emperor's Champion to see who comes out on top. In the new leagues of Votan Codex, the Iron Hair Champion is an HQ choice, 90 points or 100 if you give him the great big hammer, and is a character model with the accelerated Iron Hair and Exo Armor keywords, all of which can be handy for stratagems or relevant for transports. Statline wise, he's got a 5 inch movement, hits on 2s, strength and toughness 5, a big 5 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 9 and a 2 plus save, protected by void armor, basically armor of contempt. Pretty meaty as a base stat line, and that's further reinforced by a minus one damage from exo armor, and also a minus one to wound in melee with a ram shield that he has, and it all adds up to him just being particularly hard to remove in combat. Very, very tanky for the points, and it seems like he's pretty dangerous as well, particularly with buffs. The champion gets the choice of crests, either you get a weaver field crest for an extra wounds to six wounds and a four plus invul, it probably seems like the better one, but you do have the option of the teleport crest as well, that one lets you deep strike and also teleport across the battlefield as well. It'll be one CP to do that, but the charge will be kind of unreliable, so I feel like just going for raw might and toughness is probably best. Weapons wise, they're both pretty scary. His hammer costs 10 points and is perhaps the standout one. Strength times 2, so strength 10, AP minus 3 and a huge damage D3 plus 3. It is minus 1 to hit, but even so, any hits that you sneak through are going to cause some crazy damage and there is a cool relic version of it. The other option is the Dark Star Axe, strength 6, AP minus 3 and damage 1, but it doubles the attacks and you can't use any ignore wounds rolls rules, so it ignores things like feel no pain or any hard damage caps like say Abaddon or Catan. Otherwise it's got mass driver accelerators, an impact mortal wound attack, where when you charge into the enemy you roll 1d6, if you equal or beat the enemy's toughness then they suffer d3 mortal wounds, a nice little sting in the tail when he charges. It's got a little bit of shooting with an auto combi bolter at 4 shots at strength 4 AP minus 1 with a 24 inch range, might splash an infantry or two but not that big, and he does actually have a buff ability as well, re-rolling ones to wound for hearth guard units nearby, that doesn't apply to him though. In general this guy is just made to smash and be a frontline combat character, maybe not super super tough against shooting for the cost but really quite hard to remove in melee, so hopefully you'd want to have him spring out and get the jump on the enemy. Damage output wise, the mass hammer will average you 2.3 hits if you aren't buffed, though there's plenty of interesting ways for buffs. It's going to be pretty weak against infantry, two dead guardsmen, or maybe just one or two dead space marines, though it doesn't really care whether they're gravis ones or standard with that massive damage and strength profile. Just on their raw stats, it's around about 7 wounds to a toughness 7 or 8 vehicle. Really, he wants to be engaging heavy hitters if he can. The Dark Star Axe is far more anti infantry orientated. Around 7 hits at strength 6 and AP minus 3. Around 5 or 6 dead guardsmen. Again, 1 or 2 dead space marines, but much worse against gravis marines or vehicles. I think probably the hammer is worth the upgrade, as it can just break things that are incredibly valuable. In terms of getting more out of him, judgment tokens do seem to be the order of the day for the new Votan Codex. Auto wounds is great, maybe more so on the axe than the hammer with its massive strength but it's still pretty important to bypass things like transhuman physiology. He could get rerolls to hit from the Carl, and the Grimnir could give him plus one toughness and the feel no pain, plus also strip enemy imbors, which is perhaps a bit more realistic. I think for the durability buff from the Grimnir, that might be better off on something else, maybe like the Hearthguard. For buffs and synergies, he's got access to some warlord traits and a fair few relics. Perhaps the most relevant warlord trait is reroll wounds in melee, and his attacks ignore feel no pain or damage caps. That seems that like that would work pretty nicely on the big hammer to be honest. Gets you the best of both worlds and could be a massively credible threat to someone like Abaddon the Despoiler. Then there's a whole bunch of handy relics. There's a fight's last option. A very very scary mass hammer where sixes to hit trade their damage for D3 plus 3 mortal wounds. That one could make it genuinely efficient against infantry if you roll well. Immer's shield is a defensive one for a once per round changing one of your failed saves to damage zero and a 5 plus chance to grant a judgement token to the unit that dealt it. At another form resurrects on death one called Rave Bearer's Grace, 
regenerate a wound in your command phase, and a speed plus chance to resurrect on death with D3 wounds remaining. Transport wise, I guess you could deploy from a land fortress, though probably just foot slogging up the board behind squads is kind of fine. And stratagems wise, you could get a 1 CP for rerolling all hits versus a judgment token unit, plus 1 to hit for an iron hair unit. Personal grudge seems quite good, where in the command phase you nominate one enemy unit and his attacks count as 3 judgment tokens against them. That could give you some very good auto wound goodness. The accelerated keyword means he can advance a crazy 12 inches, though he wouldn't be able to charge. And for those crests, the teleport one could jump him across the board, though again, with no plus one to charge, it's not that reliable. And the shield crest could give him a transhuman physiology rule if he really wanted to survive some attacks. For the leagues, I think a few of them are standout. Great Aetherian leagues reroll one hit or wound roll is great with that hammer, plus they have quite a good defensive relic for him, worsening incident AP by an extra minus one. That means that even AP minus 3 attacks would still be saved on a 3 plus with the good armour. The Urani Surta Regulates gives you plus 1 toughness, there's a warlord trait for a 5 plus feel no pain which is quite nice, and a 1 command point fights and death stratagem, really not giving you much incentive to remove him in combat. But it seems that if you want to do melee dwarves well, the Cronus Hegemony is the way to go, plus 1 attack and plus 1 strength in the first round of melee. Melee attacks become AP minus 1 better if you're against units with 2 or more judgement tokens, and they've got a warlord trait to re-roll hit rolls, plus 1 attack and plus 1 wound against characters and monsters. They've also got a 1 command point stratagem for exploding 6s to hit, as if you needed anything else. Putting that together, just one idea for a scary build could be a Cronus one with the warlord trait against attacking a 2 judgement token unit, and then equipped with that relic mass hammer which converts his damage to mortal wounds on 6s to hit. The Cronus trait would allow you to re-roll hits with 5 attacks at strength 11, AP minus 4 and damage D3 plus 3. Fish for those 6s to get D3 plus 3 mortal wounds and any 5s that you happen to get incidentally also will auto wound. It's a hammer that hits so hard that it has a good chance of killing all your friends and family with those mortal wounds. So he averages something like 10 dead guardsmen, about 5 dead standard space marines or I think actually a bit over 18 wounds versus toughness 7 and toughness 8 vehicles I'm pretty sure I forgot to account for the plus 1 attack and plus 1 to wound, so it might be getting on for something like 22, a pretty reasonable chance for one-shotting things like Imperial Knights. Pretty mad there, even if it does take delivering a slow character, a fair bit of investment and setup. Finally, I thought we'd dispense with all the upgrades and things, and just put a base Iron here champion against the Emperor's champion, a pretty worthy opponent from the Black Templars, maybe not the single strongest combatant out there in 40k. But seeing as he's 100 points and the Iron Hair Champion's also 100, plus he's got some fairly decent character killing rules, he could be a good matchup. He's got a 2 plus save and a 4 plus imbo, 5 wounds and attacks, and 6 with shock assault, and some big attacks with 6 attacks at strength 8, AP minus 4, and damage 3, re rolling all hits and wounds against characters. Seems like a fairly reasonable equivalent in the Space Marine Codex. Just for our slightly abstract hypothetical battle, they'll both get to shoot and both counters charging for their attacks and we'll see how much damage they do relative to their opponent's wounds. The Iron Hair's Champion Combi Bolter does 0.5 wounds to the Emperor's Champion on average, then his Mass Accelerator does around about 0.6 mortal wounds on average, that's lessened due to the Black Templar's save against mortal wounds, then the Mass Hammer comes into bat, swings with a big 4 attacks, on average you're only getting around about 1 failed save through, but still enough to on average kill the Emperor's Champion, 5.5 wounds there, giving you a big total of 6.6 .6 wounds out of 5, or 133% damage. The Emperor's Champion strikes back with a single bolt pistol attack, which isn't going to do much against 2 plus armour. The Emperor's Sword then goes into bat with 6 attacks at strength 8, AP minus 4, damage 3. It does re-roll all hits and wounds, though the Iron Hair Champion's got some pretty powerful defences. A 4 plus inborn, minus 1 damage and minus 1 to wound, gets you around about 4.7 wounds total. With the Shield Crest, the Iron Hair Champion's got 6 wounds, so it only adds up to 80% damage. It does seem that even unbuffed and without judgement tokens, the Iron Hair Champion does seem to be the superior combatant versus the Emperor's Champion. It's a victory for our new Space Dwarf Overlords, it seems, though I can imagine that this isn't the sort of comparison that Space Marine players are really going to like to hear. So let me know what you think of the Champion model, what do you make of his potentially crazy damage output, and do you think it might even be worth running multiple of these in the Leagues of Votan list? Stay tuned for a full Codex review, that should hopefully be dropping next. Really looking forward to digging through the Leagues of Votan Codex in full. Feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics if you'd like to see that. Finally, if you've been enjoying all the videos on the channel and would like to help keep them coming, 
I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page, and you can find that link down in the video description below. The channel's Patreon is what allows me to keep these videos coming quite so regularly, so if you are enjoying any support is massively appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.